Well, good evening. I found out that uh, Brother Jay was sick, so I figured I'd better let uh, Harold know about it and uh, ask him if I could go ahead and fill in for him this evening. So we'll do the best we can, and uh, I promise not to make it real long, uh, like I usually do. <laughs> so uh, work with me. <laughs> yeah, we want to discuss this evening. Have you been fishing lately? I mean, it's a good uh, outside recreational thing to, to do. Uh, I know I haven't done it for a little while, uh, probably about 35, 40 years. <laughs> but I uh, had plans to do it when we lived out by Eric's and had that pond. Uh, but he kept me so busy, I never got a chance to get down there and hit that pond, see what I could get. But growing up, the only thing I could usually catch was bluegill. Uh, and the ponds that uh, over by Carmichael's and, and things in that order. But it was relaxing. It was uh, also trying at times because sometimes you sit out there for hours and never got a nibble. And I, I went out with uh, Bruce Henthorne one time, and he took me out on the boat out here on the river. And they thought they'd go fishing. I just took a ride with them. And I held a net for them just in case they got the fish. I can scoop it up. Well, as they were fishing, they weren't getting any nibbles. And I'm seeing fish at the top of the river. And I'm taking the, <laughs> the, the net and, and scooping them up. I said, uh, this is what you're looking for. <laughs> so uh, it, it's amazing uh, what it's like to go fishing at times. It can be fun. It can be enjoyable, relaxing. But also, it can be a... Uh, a headache at times uh, if you're not catching anything. And, and, and sometimes we as Christians uh, do the same thing within our life uh, as we try to go fishing, as uh, Christ told Peter uh, in Luke, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 11, uh, as Nathan read. Uh, I will, in verse 10, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. They were fishermen, but he wanted them to catch individual souls, what he's trying to get them to, to realize. If you turn with me to, to uh, Matthew, the fourth chapter, begin reading in verse uh, 18. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from this, he saw two other brethren, the J James, the son of Zebedee, John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And they immediately left the ship with their father and followed him, followed after Christ. The fact that Jesus was trying to get them to realize that there was something more important than the fish they were catching at this time. It's a livelihood that they had, and they were doing well because they were making a living with it. But at the same time, Christ was giving them something better, uh, more important uh, to do. And sometimes we need to realize that we as Christians, we are to be fishing. And it's supposed to be more than just a recreational uh, idea. It is something that we need to be doing upon the face of this earth. As read in Luke 15, or 5th chapter, verses 1 through 11, we are to save souls. That's what we're out here for. We're to gather individuals. That's what we are doing as Christians. That's the type of fishing we ought to be living for. In Mark, the 16th chapter, beginning with verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. At my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover fact that Jesus told the apostles at this time, 
draw, teach, gather, individual, fishing for men, teaching them everything that Christ told them and taught them at this point, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's what we are to do today. We are commanded within the scriptures to go fish. We're to save souls. That's our responsibility as Christians upon the face of this earth. But sometimes we as Christians just don't have the same interest in trying to fish for men and the vigor that we need for this spiritual fishing as there is for physical uh, fishing. Sometimes we see individuals that will go fishing physically but won't attempt to fish for men and bring them to God. When we spiritually fish, the catch is far greater than any that uh, physical fishing can ever give us at this point. We always love to tell the big one that always got caught, and uh, and I've seen individuals tell some nice whoppers uh, as fish stories. Uh, I've seen some that gather uh, and caught one about this big, but by the time they tell everybody, it's about 80 pounds and, and uh, uh, 10 feet long and, <laughs> and things on that order. And people try to, to make it more interesting than what sometimes it is. As I say, when I fish, bluegill was the biggest that I, I could catch. I couldn't catch the other ones. Uh, I don't think there was much in that pond we was hitting. But I've seen some that go out ocean fishing and, and bring in, uh, I mean, when you stand there and fight for 15, 24 hours trying to bring one fish in, uh, I don't know I had to stand them to, to do that and have to be uh, tied down in a chair, uh, try to bring them in. But they get enjoyment out of that. That's what they pay. That's what they uh, pay for when they go on vacation, to be able to do such because they enjoy fishing. Every once in a while, that big one that, that they have, after fighting it for so long, will every once in a while get away. Catching a soul is always a big one. In uh, Matthew uh, 16 and uh, verse 26, let's begin with verse 24. Matthew 16. Then said Jesus unto his disciple, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here that shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Christ is standing here and asking the question, what happens if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? That's how important the soul is out there for us to gather. We are to strive to, to, to save that soul from losing his spiritual life, going to eternal damnation. That's how important it is. Apostle Paul uh, thought it was very important to do such because in 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and beginning in verse 19, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I may win the more. To the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, but not being without law towards God, but under the law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. 
Paul was willing to make himself give up things to help those who are weak in, in their faith. And we likewise need to learn to uh, humble ourselves in trying to teach those who are weak in the faith. We need to save souls. We are to fish. Not only are we to fish for those out in the world, but also within the church. We are to make sure that we don't lose what we have uh, within the body of Christ. We are to work with them. We are to teach them. We are to get them to grow. Individual when I worked down at Peterson Hospital had a fish tank in the middle hall, and he bought a goldfish, and he bought one just like everybody else bought one. But after quite a few years of, of nurturing that goldfish, it fit the tank itself. That's how big it got, and he just babied that thing and and made sure that uh, he took well good care of it. I mean, he, he was out there every day just working with that thing and, and nurturing and, and had it grow, I mean, size of, of the tank itself until some young child came through and decided uh, he wanted to see the fish and knocked the fish tank over and, uh, and he lost the, the, the fish that he uh, took care of. But the fact is, he did everything he could to help it. To, he nurtured it. And that's what we need to be doing as Christians. Those who are weak, if we know that uh, there are certain things they don't believe or, or uh, want to be involved in, then we need to give it up to this point until they understand that it might be okay for a Christian to do such. For example, years ago, when I was growing up, if you had a deck of cards in the house, oh, that was, that was you, you, couldn't, you couldn't sit any worse than that. But cards itself ain't wrong in itself. Any game that you buy, Monopoly or whatever, got cards in it. <laughs> but these individuals were to the point you can't play Monopoly or, or things on that order. Because they were offended by it. And they thought that was totally wrong for a Christian to, to, to do. And But as they grow up and, and become nurtured within the Lord, those type of games, as long as you're doing it the way you're supposed to do, nothing wrong with it. It's wrong when we try to make something else out of it when we start putting money down or, or something on that order and starting to, to uh, gamble or make bets with uh, those type of cards, then we are in trouble. The fact is, when we are catching a big one, uh, as we need to be doing, uh, it should excite us. Uh, you ever go on fishing? Think got a nice big uh, bass or, or uh, trout? And you're just proud of it, and you have hanging there, and, and you have somebody take a picture of it, and, and uh, so you show it to your friends what you caught, and you just you just smile from ear to ear. That's the way we should be when we get one to become a Christian. We should be tickled to death when one becomes a member of the body of Christ. We should be joyous. We should be ecstatic that these things happen. They're taking place. We know that there is a soul that is being saved from eternal damnation. And it's good that we express those feelings, those emotions at time. Because it gives us as Christians a boost knowing that we are doing some good upon this earth uh, for God. Sometimes, like I say, with physical fishing, we have one that gets away. Acts the 26th chapter and begin with verse 22. Acts 26 and verse 22. Therefore, if attain help of God, I continue to this day, witnessing both to the great and small, saying none of other things than those which the prophet and Moses should say should come. That Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that shall rise from the dead, 
and shall show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning hath made you mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, for speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things before whom I shall speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. How many times have we worked with somebody trying to get them to, to understand God's Word? And we do uh, home studies with them and trying to, to convince them what God wants them to do. And we plead with them to, to listen to His Word where they'll lose their soul. And then we may spend months with them then nothing happens. They, they flatly reject it. And it gets down at all times that we see those things take place or happen. And sometimes as physical uh, fishing, as, as I say, I know I've sat out there for two or three hours and, and never got a nibble. Never got anything. And that gets a little frustrated and you say, well, I'm going to throw this pole, pole away because it's no good. <laughs> but do we give up? No, we usually go back out and try again a couple of days later. That's what we need to be doing when those that we do lose and do not become obedient to God's will, that we don't give up, that we continue on trying to, to preach and to teach and try to get them to become obedient to God's word as they should. We need to keep working at that at all times. Remember in Luke, the fifth chapter, what did Christ tell Paul or Peter to do at that time? Throw your nets out. Well, Lord, we tried. We, we fished all night. We didn't get anything. But I'll do what you, what you request of me. I'll, we'll throw it back out. What happened? And that became so heavy that they had to cut it call another boat over and help pull the net up out and it almost pulled the ships down into the water because they're so heavy a load. That's the way it works. Not everybody's going to be obedient to God's Word. But that one more time that we try to, to work with somebody and to teach and spread the gospel to may be the one that does obey God's Word and become obedient to his will and become a Christian. But sometimes, like I say, it takes patience. just like fishing. It takes time. And we got to work at it. Who knows? But God, that more to his soul will be obeyed the next time we preach the gospel. I know that uh, one congregation I was with uh, the brother been working with some individuals and we had Austin Mobley in for a gospel meeting and he taught and we had a real good meeting that, that year and we had 12 baptisms and 13 restored in one week in one week because we, we worked we put out we, we've done everything that was possible to try to get them to, to hear God's Word. And the lessons he taught was very uplifting and, and, and was right on in accordance to the Scriptures. And I think his lessons really drove the point home. And it got the congregation to grow. But they worked at it first. Before I even got down there, they were working with these individuals. And that's the way it should be. You just never know. There may be years that we may not have somebody become a Christian. And then all of a sudden you may have maybe five, six within a few short months. Or maybe within a gospel meeting, we've been working with certain individuals and they come, hear the gospel being taught by another individual. 
And they're teaching the same thing we've been trying to teach them. And all of a sudden, if maybe six or seven during that week become members of the body of Christ. You never know. Sometimes when we fish, we will catch other things that we don't always uh, intend to get. <laughs> I don't know if you've been uh, some of the areas that uh, in creeks or whatever that's deep enough or rivers, uh, you end up uh, throw that hook out there and, and that line, and all of a sudden uh, you go to pull on it because you think you got something, and it's a boot or a tire, <laughs> or uh, maybe caught a snake by accident, or a, uh, a turtle, or some type of other trash that is out there at times. And you pull it in, and you get like, it's not what I want. <laughs> I, I want to fish. But sometimes we do go out, and we do cast gospel out there, and then we find out that there are some that are will become Christians, but they're not the type of uh, members that will try or, or try to change their life, and they become bad. And sometimes can be a, a hindrance to the church at some point. Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning verse 40, or, yeah. Let's see. Okay, verse uh, 46, Matthew 13, verse 46. Who, when he found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the city and gathered of every kind. Which, when it was full, they drew it to the shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from those among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Are we always going to catch something good? There are certain uh, fishing uh, companies that go out and, and troll the, the ocean for a certain type of, of uh, fish. And when they pull their nets in, they find they got maybe a dolphin or, or something that they weren't expecting, and they toss it back out into the sea a lot of times. Or some other uh, type of fish. And they separate. They go through these things. And they have to, to get rid of what they're not expecting to have. And sometimes uh, we as Christians within the church, we end up having those who are just not what they should be as Christians. And if we try to work with them and try to get them to grow as they should, and we're not getting anywhere, uh, sometimes we have to withdraw uh, from certain individuals. We will have moments that will be bad, but at the same time, it will be mingled in with some good. And God said at the judgment day, we're going to separate them. And those who uh, are bad, then they will uh, be wailing and gnashing their teeth. Uh, they've lost their soul for eternity. But the idea that we need to just keep fishing and let the angels and the Lord handle that situation. Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning in verse 24. Another parable put he forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened to the man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came, sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou now sow good seed, seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest we gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together into the harvest. 
And in the time of harvest, I will say unto the reapers, Gather ye therefore the first, the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barns. Have we raised crops? Or flowers? And you plant them and, and you try to, to lay the material down where you wouldn't try to get weeds, and all of a sudden, there they are. They're there. The strawberry plants that uh, Eric grows uh, has grass and weeds that will come up. But the problem is, if you try to go in and try to pull that, sometimes you pull the plant up with it. So we kind of try to deal with it to some degree, try to get what we can, but we leave the rest there. Because the fact that you don't want to tear up what's good and what's producing at that time to try to get one or two little uh, type of weeds out, you don't want to do that. So when the season ends, then we go back through, and then that's when we take the lawnmower and mow the plants down and let them spring back up again and try to catch uh, what we can every month uh, of the weeds that keep trying to come back. And believe me, it's a job. It's a lot of work to it. This is what Christ is saying. This is what Christ is teaching them. Sometimes we just have to, to let God handle it at the judgment day. Deal with those type of problems. So the question is tonight, and I, I promise it's going to be a short lesson. It's going to be. But the quite, fact is, have, have we gone fishing lately? And that's a question we need to ask ourselves. When's the last time you went spiritual fishing? When's the last time you went out and talked to somebody about the gospel? When's the last time that they, you hear somebody discussing scriptures and, and you listen to them for a little bit and then you, you get yourself involved in it? Sometimes oddest place that you might hear somebody discussing scriptures. I've done it at Treasure Island at uh, Studentville when it was over there. I've done it down at Alley Letter Ford uh, waiting for oil change and uh, inspection. And you got four men in there talking about the gospel. And I just sat there and listened for a while and uh, now through my two cents in <laughs> until each one finally left and left me there by myself. <laughs> but you never know. You never know when you might discuss scriptures. I never thought of banner that I have an individual ask me questions about the Bible. And he told another individual, because he's asking questions too, he said, uh, talk to Ed, he knows everything. I was like, whoa. <laughs> No, back that one up. I said, I'm still learning. But the fact is, we sat down and talked. We was able to discuss what the scriptures had to say. I had individuals that uh, attend a liberal congregation up in Collier, and when we went down for maintenance, we always got together and worked on maintenance. And he asked me how to handle certain situations, like those that speak in tongue. What scriptures can I use for that? And I try to give him the scriptures that he can use to talk to them, how he can to point out what they're doing is wrong in comparison to, to what they believe. But you never know when you can talk. You never know who it might be. Could be a family member, could be a friend, could be a stranger. But do we ever take the opportunity to do that spiritual fishing? It should be more than just a recreational activity that we get involved in within our lives. Yes, it's enjoyable to go fishing and to, to relax a little bit. And I know some families in here that uh, took their family fishing down at uh, Ogilvy and uh, took great pictures, <laughs> but
But think about it. This involves spiritually too. We're to fish. As I read in Mark uh, a little while ago, 16th chapter and verse 15, we're to be out teaching. God can teach God's Word, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things God has commanded us to do. Are we doing that? And that's the question this evening. And I plead with you to think about it. Do we take every opportunity we have? As I say, just with one catch, a fisherman can be hooked onto something that maybe will catch more uh, than we realize we're capable of doing. If you're not a member of the body of Christ this evening, you have the opportunity to do something about it before it's eternally too late for your soul. You must hear his word, believe that Christ came, lived, and died upon the cross, resurrected upon the third day, and is with his Father in heaven at this moment. And he's going to be coming back. You need to repent of your sins, be willing to change your life and live for God and not just for myself. Confess by mouth confessions that he can confess us before his Father. If we don't confess that he's the Son of the living God, then he'll deny us. Be baptized by immersion. Live a faithful life unto death. Revelation 2 chapter and verse 10 asks us to do it. And we can do those things, but sometimes that last one, remain faithful unto death, it gets difficult at times. Because if we're not doing God's will, we'll answer for it one day. If I'm not trying to improve my life as a Christian, we'll answer for it. We need to realize that we need to grow. We need to, to teach. We need to work. Do we take every opportunity we have? Or do we sometimes get involved in this life? But we let it go at first within our life. As we're studying on Sunday morning, adult Bible study, uh, the problems that we run into as Christians between the devil and, and, and Christ. It's a battle. It's a battle we face every day. And we need to understand that it can lead us away from God or we can go to God asking for the help we need and sometimes our brother. Prayer. Again, we may have done these things but fell and, and brought reproach upon Christ or I may have problems within my life that I need help with. I need prayers on behalf of those members. Don't be afraid. As Jay's been teaching and, and saying at the end of his lessons, take the opportunity to ask for help. There's no shame in that. Asking God to, to be there for us and the members of the body of Christ to help me overcome my weaknesses. Do we take that opportunity? Let's go fishing. Let's also realize Let's take the opportunity, if you're not a member of the body of Christ, to do something before it's eternally too late. As we stand and sing the song, 